David, this is not some crazy, rich, whiny Asian story. This is a crazy, talented, underrepresented refugee Asian story. And let me tell you this, Sunisa Lee's gold medal means so much to Asian America more than any script, TV show, or movie because this was not some Hollywood fake shit. This was real life global stage. Welcome everybody to the Hot Pop Boys. Andrew and David here. Something big that we got to talk about. Sunisa Lee, a Hmong American from St. Paul, Minnesota, has just won the gold medal in what is considered the top event of the entire Olympics. This is setting the internet on fire, specifically the Asian internet. Right. I think that, you know, the mainstream people, they are covering it, but they're almost more caught up in the Simone Biles, sort of like white-black binary, you know, debate. You know, obviously, African-Americans more supporting Simone and white Americans, I guess, yeah. I'm, not, I'm just painting everybody in generalizations right now going against her for quitting. I actually don't see that discussion happening in the Asian American community. We're more celebrating Sunisa. Yeah, and so there's so many different layers to this. You could say, oh, she's just an American girl from Minnesota. That's great. She won the gold. But actually, her being Hmong is huge to this. So let's talk about what it means to the Hmong community specifically, what it means to larger Southeast Asian uh, community because that's where the Mongs uh, are, are from and then what it means to Asian America and what it even means to America. So we're going to pull it from my, micro to macro. Micro to macro. All Let's right. do it. All I right. think on a Hmong American level they haven't had a lot of positive representation um, on this level. Like a real champion. I know that Brenda Song is Hmong. She played a lot of Chinese characters. Mm -hmm. Um uh, obviously, Gran Torino was, I guess, more negative because it was talking about the refugee hood, I guess, gang yeah. aspect of that experience. Yeah. But I think Sunisa's story is like amazing. It's very 2021. The parents are still, you know, uh, refugees. Yeah. They built her makeshift gymnastics equipment. The father had a tragic ladder accident and is paralyzed from the chest down. Mm -hmm. Uh, in just a few just a, just a few days before she went to go to nationals, she won nationals. She's a world champion, and then finally she becomes a global champion. And, and by the way, real quick, I mean, when we're talking about the Hmong community, for a lot of people who are out there and that are not familiar, even a lot of Asians in America are not familiar with Hmongs. We're familiar because we grew up in s south side of Seattle around Hmong, Mien, and Chan people. These are groups of Southeast Asian people that do not have countries. They don't have right. a set nation. And I think that more people are kind of getting exposed to that idea nowadays. Even smaller countries like Laos, Vietnam, uh, they have like ethnic minorities. Right. It's not just one exactly. group. You know what I mean? And obviously, Hmong people, they have a history originally from what is now modern day Yunnan, China, uh, by the Yellow River. And then um, the Han came down from the north, chased them out, unfortunately. I mean, not that I can apologize mm -hmm. on behalf on anybody, but let me apologize. <laughs> For it, uh, for what it's worth, for what it's worth, <laughs> it doesn't. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't mean much, but uh, my bad or our bad. But uh, uh, I guess basically they got chased into Southeast Asia and they've been existing as the non-dominant group mm -hmm. in Laos, yeah. Vietnam, and, and and still to this day and, in China. And they have a similar story to a lot of other Southeast Asian refugees with the Vietnam War. It's a very tumultuous history, a lot of pain, a lot of trauma, a lot of death from their history, and then they made it to America. Yeah, and, um, I mean, even America kind of gave them up. After the secret war. I mean, I don't want to get into that stuff, but this all provides a backdrop for how amazing is it is. And, you know, this group has had decades and decades, or maybe you could argue even centuries of pain, the Hmong people. Yeah. And so for Sunisa to have this, it's almost like that's not, they don't have to focus on the stories of pain anymore. Those still always will be there, but this can transcend that. I mean, and that's beautiful. And they needed that. And I'm so happy for them as the Hmong American community. The Hmong American community is one of those represented, underrepresented Asian groups that needs the disaggregation of data because basically they don't fall in line with the overall like model minority myth narrative. Basically of Asians being all well to do, super educated, super like hooty toot, like that, it, they don't, that's the other side. They're, they're the Southeast Asian side in general. This is it. And not only that, it's that, I think it's interesting that she's Hmong because, you know, she's won the gold in Tokyo, which if you think about Japanese as the, like, I guess most like well-known yeah, elite kinda. advanced Asian, right? And that is the most advanced like city in the world, Tokyo, right? But she's coming there as a Hmong American, which I guess in a way, if she was still in Asia, like she might not even get this opportunity to compete in the Olympics because Hmongs don't have a nation to compete in right. the Olympics, and I right? think that that speaks to the beauty of it's, America, and I think there's so many think pieces they're going to try to dissect it because it's like 
there's so many angles to it, pros and cons. This story is only possible in America, but you could also say that America also, you know, has a very, you know, tumultuous relationship with the Hmong people. And, you know, I'm just so happy that we're, it's going up. Yeah. Because Sunisa Lee has her own day in Minnesota now. They could just focus on this. They can build on this positivity. And, you know, the people in St. Paul, maybe they didn't always accept the Hmong people, but now they have a champion. They gave America a champion. They gave yeah. Minnesota a champion. By the way, this does not mean, like, uh, racism in Minnesota is going to stop against Asians or anything like that. Of course, you know, we know that media representation is super, super important, but it can't change everything. But it just changes everybody a little bit. That's what media does. It just hits you a it, little bit, you know, and, 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 and that's why it's important. And that's why it's important to say she's Hmong American too, because um, it's just a, such a, it's an underrepresented group of an underrepresented group. Right. Uh, shout out to the Moob. The Moob. I believe that that that's is how what they, they say. refer to They, they have sayings uh, within the Hmong community that I read about where it's like, Hmong must love Hmong because who else will love Hmong? And that's like, right. Because man, they've been, they've been ostracized so in a lot of the lands that they, uh, uh, their homelands. I'm in. not going to lie. When I heard the quote, I was like, whoa. That's, that's heavy. Man, I'm so but, happy for Hmong people. I know they've been through a lot, and um, obviously I can't fully speak to it, not being part of that group, but, um, you know, I have I know a lot of Hmong people. We filmed the Hmong food episode that went pretty viral before, and, um, man, it, it media representation, I will say this, as much as this is like, I think a lot of people always go to TV shows and, and movie roles and all these careers mm -hmm. and associations with white people. Sunisa Lee just came up from the dirt and just yeah. came in the game and took it over. Yeah. She doesn't have a gatekeeper and her exec give her the okay. It's a meritocracy in sports. Yeah. And it reminds me a lot of when Jalen came in and started dropping 25 a game straight off the rip. And it's hey. like, that's why I value sports so much. And sports is media representation too, because at the end of the day, sports is still entertainment and media and effects representation. So, hey man, so happy for Sunusa Lee and the Amon yeah. community. Yeah. You know what, Andrew, I got to say, it made me want to announce. What say it? We might be part Hmong. Okay. All right. We, we might be like, I think 1%. I believe we are 1% Hmong. We, we did the DNA test and we plugged it into some other data and it got really specific on the on the tribe that our like 3% Southeast Asian side is from, probably from our uh, uh, yeah, Cantonese father who's Southern Chinese, right? Uh, yeah. I mean, it's close to there. Shout hey. Out, hey, I'm not, I'm not jacking it just to, <laughs> nah. you know, just because I'm not cloud chasing, but I just wanted to say that, yeah. you know, the funny thing is it's like, that's, it, that's notable. It, it felt like an app time to just bring that up. Hey, listen, I know so many Hmong people that for the longest time they were like, yo guys, I've been trying to explain what Hmong is to people. And we, we try to do our part, you know, with our platform as well. And it was so hard because they're really like, it wasn't that much to work off of, but when you have a star from your community, and this is why. Uh, fortunately and unfortunately, stars are important. You need these high achievers to come from your community and shed light on your identity and you get to speak up yeah. about it. Every identity, not just Asians or not just colored people, every identity has gone through some version of this where you have to have that famous person come out and speak up. And what I love about Sunisa, shout out to her, she is unapologetic. She says stuff that's on the top of her mind. She's an 18 year old. She's from Minnesota. She don't care. No, she know all the TikTok dances, you know. I don't know. I didn't see, but, like, I'm sure she can, you know, I'm a savage. You know, She is I, a savage. Uh, yeah, she is a savage. And, you know, I love that. I think that, you know what, to speak to one more, I guess, more to get more macro about Southeast Asians, I love how authentic and organic they are. To be honest, I do think, um, and I'm not trying to make a split here. I'm just making observations. A lot of the East Asians in media, which are from uh, Japan, Korea, China, um, they're Taiwan. from very preppy boarding school backgrounds or elite private schools, uh, at least the ones in media. Obviously, we didn't go to one. We're East Asian, but like, um, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, a like lot of a the, lot of the people stars. in media is from very bougie backgrounds. So why are we surprised that they do bougie things once they get even more richer off right. being in movies and media and getting in that like silo? Mm -hmm. Like to me, I'm not against it because I don't really want to hate on people just for being born in a into right. a private school family and running with it it's and then achieving fault. private school kid things. Like that's why a lot of elites in society come for private school. But like, I'm about the kids. Like I was reading about Sunisa's family trying to fund her gymnastics career, right. selling pho out of the garage. Because a lot of Southeast Asians eat pho, not just Viet, but the whole reason they have their own version. But like, uh, like 
They're selling pho. They're trying to get the the whole right. community funded her it. very expensive gymnastics thing. And I remember seeing that growing up. Yeah, no, you know, saw. like our parents. Uh, f- not our parents, but I'm saying our friends' families own catering yep. trucks, small restaurants. Yep. Just had like stands selling strawberries, like just all different types of things. That's like very not part of the model minority experience. Very mm-hmm. much part of the refugee blue and, collar and- experience. And I got so much heart for that, and I learned so much from that. And I think for me, I think it's so important for Southeast Asians to see like you don't gotta be from like, and even East Asians that are not from like a bougie background to see you can be. From get you can get it out the mud, yeah. In gymnastics, which is not like it's not basketball or one of those sports that uh, is play. It's not a team sport and it's not played like you know in the hood. Really, gymnastics is like she gymnastics is a way in a way like for her to change her family narrative, right? Her excelling at gymnastics and basically now going to college with the new collegiate rules where she can monetize even during college. Like she has basically changed her entire family narrative and possibly impacted the community as well. And I think that when you come from such a tight knit, small community, it really impacts it and the ripple effects are crazy. Yeah, I mean, we just had Raya drop and you know, I think that, I think this is gonna really shine a spotlight on Southeast Asians. Yeah, and they deserve I think, it. I think they have such interesting personalities and it, to be honest, much far generally to me, far more Yo, interesting than East Asian personalities. Honestly, because we, you, they can do the dances. They can do the I'm the savage dance. A lot of East Asians can't do that or they're, or they're not into it. We always said that the Southeast Asians, they got the most interesting stories. When Easily. you talk about stories from Asia or which stories should get made into movies or which ones should get scripts written about them, the Southeast Asian ones are the most like craziest. Yeah, like I'm not like Tiger Tail and Farewell. I we love underst- shout out. I understood those movies very deeply to my family's experience because yes. that's I was like, yeah, it's kind of like that. But <laughs> somebody got to yeah. tell the Southeast Asian story and not Gran Torino too. Yeah. Like I'm talking about like in a more dope, positive, textured light. Exactly. Um, I just like that they're getting the spotlight and people are thinking, you know what's crazy is that she is not just making America think more about Hmong people. She is making the globe acknowledge Hmong people. Right. Think about it. Like I said, people don't even speak English from Denmark, uh, Japan, or wherever else. Like, well, this yeah, they speak English in Australia, of course. But uh, it's like, they're thinking about what Hmong people are right now. Yeah, yeah, they're seeing yeah. these headlines being like, what is this H-M-O-N-G? Like, okay, let me just Google this, you know? I mean, I started, you know, we've had Hmong food before once uh, doing a video out in LA about Hmong food. And, and since then, I, I was yelping Hmong food in, in St. Paul, Minnesota, because I was like, yo, if we go out there, yeah, these I'm are the spots get, we're hitting. I'm, I'm trying to get the boiled chicken and cabbage. Yeah, they got uh, the stuffed chicken wings and the sausages and yeah. all that. Anyway, anyways, think, what do you think about? Just for about? larger Asians, man, I mean, we kind of alluded to it. We've been kind of blending all three topics, but it's just like, I want to see more representation from like really regular families, you know, like you still see the same level of sacrifice even in a, you know, at just a lower income level. And like I said, sports, it's always been the way for blue collar people to come up. You know what I mean? Like to change your family's Mm -hmm. fortune, your whole family narrative in just 18 years. Mm -hmm. You can do it. Yeah. Sunisa Lee did it. She did change it for a whole community that's been searching for a champion. You know, it's it's even beyond maybe what they would have imagined. And I just think that, um, I do agree that sometimes East Asians, you know, Uh, Not to say that their challenges or East Asian challenges aren't valid, but they get caught up in it and they're not paying attention to the whole group. And Mm -hmm. I will say it's possibly because we're Chinese, which is more of a pan-Asian Asian. Asian. You know what I mean? Like, I guess like a lot of Asians are related to like in some way historically to uh, being Chinese or whatever like that, if you you really analyze it. But like, I, I always cared about the whole thing. I cared about everybody. You know what I mean? Like, I I always want to see everybody do good, and that's why I'm so happy for it. I'm going to say this. It is time right now that the larger East Asian community, the people who have been dominating the Asian narrative, the crazy rich Asians, the everything like that. and Like the CEOs of TikTok and Twitch who are mostly Asian, East Asian, they need to cut Sunisa a check to start streaming or something like that. It is time that the larger East Asian community show the Southeast Asian community props. Okay, because... Sunisa Lee just did something as a Southeast Asian that no East Asian, no East Asian has done. Or any Asian, yeah. They have never won a gold in this position, in this event, ever. 
So that's why East Asians need to be like, listen, I know that we've been pushing K-pop or Chinese food or Japanese anime, all this stuff on you guys. And like, we've all been proud of it. And everybody's been looking at us this whole time. But you know what? Let's shift some light on you guys. It's your time. I'm just saying there's a lot of trillion billion dollar companies in East Asia. Cut Sunisa a check, man. She deserves an endorsement deal. Zach, for what a big check. And um, yeah, and I just think that for me on a larger scale, I, I don't know if America knew how to handle it. Like on an America scale, let's just bring it to the ultra macro in terms of a national level. I think that if you look at it for the longest time, you know, you had Carrie Strug, you had this girl, that girl, they're all white. And, Johnson, and then it turned yeah. into Gabby Douglas and then it turned into Simone Biles. And now it's like every face of USA Gymnastics that's representing USA on a global stage doesn't, is not white. Well, the last three, yeah. Yeah. And, and it may, I don't know. I mean, and they don't hard. even have white names. Like Simone Biles yeah. is not a white name. And I would not say that. Well, even one of the uh, last American ones wasn't white uh, before, uh, right after Strauss, she was uh, Russian born. Oh, okay. Right. So it's, it, uh, yeah. So anyways, but yeah, I think that what does it mean to America that the face of American gymnastics is now an Asian girl? Um, Does it mean anything? Does it shock them? Or are they kind of like, ah, it's gymnastics. We only care about it once every four years anyways, guys. But I'm like, this is, I mean, you know, like we said, it's it's crazy for the Asian community. But yeah, for the non-Asian communities in America, it's less of a huge thing. It's yeah. a smaller deal. I think that it doesn't fit back to the Simone Biles discussion. And I got a lot of love for her. I'm like, I don't even know. She's, I think she should just go take care of herself. That's my honest yeah. opinion. She already won Mad she goals. did what she needed to yeah, do, she by could. the way. And, you know, they have, like, backups there for that reason. So, if anything, she was just giving the backup a chance to shine. Like, they got fill-ins. They bring fill-ins on the team just in case that happens. So, um, to me, I just think that, like, America, it gives America a chance to get out of this, like, binary where everything is white versus black, where everything is, like, essentially has roots back to deep, deep history. And I, it's like, we just, um, it just offers a reprieve from that. Some people are going to take it as a nice reprieve and some people aren't going to lean into it. Some people are going to be like, ah, Asian girl one doesn't fit into uh, my uh, g- g- political narrative that I wanted to have. So I'll just uh, give a quite quick, you know, thumbs up and just move on. Yo, you know why the larger Asian American community needs this right now? Because a lot of people for right or wrong reasons, and we know that they're kind of painting us with a broad brush, don't respect the larger Asian narrative because they feel like we don't struggle enough and Southeast Asians, they go through it. And if not for any other reason, you got to respect it because it's basically making people respect Asians more. Right. By showing that story that Sunisa Lee went through her dad paralyzed, didn't couldn't afford the, the little balance beam. He built it for her. She wins gold. She wants to just be like a regular college student now. And I'm like, that is a powerful story. That story needs to be out there. And that's one of the reasons why we're talking about it, because we understand what is important to not just America, not just to Asian America, but to certain Asian groups. And in a way, East Asians, for right or for wrong, like I said, they get painted as like all like privileged kids, which is not true, but that's how it is in media. And now you have this other side of Asia that is uh, getting more recognition. When we say privilege, we're talking about, you know, Andrew Yang, Michelle Wee, Chloe Kim. You know, First I don't know. of all, there's, which there's are all a great pretty people. long list, you know. Yo, and I mean, you know. Even uh, Jeremy Lin came from a pretty good background, yeah, to be honest, yeah, straight up. Like, yeah, I mean, yeah. Anyways, so that's what I mean to say. I think that that is, it's so significant. It's so significant. I cannot stress enough. I mean, we could go on for another 30 minutes, David, about how significant it's big. this is. It's big. It's like, honestly, and you know, I, I, some people are going to be like, it's a reach. I feel like Sunisa Lee is the real life Raya. The real life one. The real hey. life one. Not the make-believe. Not a white writer. A CGI. Dreaming up something. Yeah. Doing their starky, you know, uh, no. anthropological studies. This was it. Real life champion. Hmong American. Southeast Asian American. Asian American. American American. I'm here for it. I think there's a trillion things to say. I'd love you, for you guys to say what it means in the comment section below. Share this with somebody you know. Um, like I said, I think there's going to be a hundred to a thousand different pieces coming out in the next week or so, Andrew, about this topic. I don't think any of them are going to go in on it like us. Yo, and, and, and let's be honest, man. You could tell how passionate we were about this topic because David's hat is flying off his head. That's how passionate he was about this, okay? So don't even question. 
Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. This is the Hot Pop Boys. Let us know in the comments down below. This is a podcast that we plan on doing more and more frequently. Please let us know if these are the type of topics you like us to cover. And if you like our analysis, please share this video. Thank you so much for watching. Hit that thumbs up. Click subscribe. And until next time, we out. Peace. Peace.